Hello, my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. The, uh, the other day, I rode my motorcycle up to uh, Riverside County, about 100, and 100 plus miles north of here, pick up some parts uh, for a motorcycle I'm working on. This Honda XR 400R. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing this air box, which has been all cut up and mutilated and melted and destroyed. And we're going to be replacing this exhaust, which has been gutted out. <coughs> and then you just stuck an end cap on here. So it's really loud. <coughs> the, uh, the guy I'm working on this for said, uh, it's hard to start. It doesn't idle very good. It's loud. So uh, I went through it, of course, uh, I already made part one of this where I adjusted the valves and took the carburetor and cleaned it all up. So that being said, the carburetor was jetted stock, factory settings on it. So if you're modifying a vehicle, any vehicle, motorcycle, car, and you open up the exhaust and you open up the intake, it is going to affect your fuel ratio. So on older vehicles, you have a carburetor. On newer vehicles, you have fuel injection. Uh, so let's say you have a newer motorcycle. It's fuel injected and you add aftermarket exhaust. What you really should do is get an ECU reflash or add a power command or something like that that's going to change your fuel map. On a carburetor, you adjust it by adding different jets and uh, different needle, that sort of stuff. And at some point, I'll probably get into doing that uh, when uh, when the time comes around that I'm working on on a motorcycle that someone wants me to rejet for them, but uh, on this one when I took it apart I wrote down what the jet sizes were, and they were the stock ones. So that is telling me that is part of the reason why this motorcycle was running terrible. The stock carburetor jetting, along with the open intake and the open exhaust, is causing it to run lean, which means that it's got not enough fuel. And too much air. Now, a lean condition causes motorcycles to run hot. It causes them not to start very easily and not to idle. So, I'm walking into the sun here to uh, let's see what was I going to grab here. Got the carburetor. Let me switch you over. Yeah, and uh, if you've seen me take apart carburetors, your jets are in here in the float bowl. Now, another issue that we had was this air filter. This air filter was just sitting inside of here, not really attached. So it was also running extremely lean. We have this big open cut on here. And well, this one's cut a little bit too. This one hasn't cut as much, but there's supposed to be a baffle that fits in here. It's a pretty common mod that that comes out. So it's gonna be okay with that, but uh, the fact that this thing was just hanging out in here and not attached is another problem with this air box. There's supposed to be a uh, arm that comes in here and straps over this to hold it in. So all those things just lead to, it's gonna be easier to just switch out this air box. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm just gonna do it in conjunction with the exhaust because in order to get this air box off, this whole back part of the motorcycle, which is called the subframe, is going to lift up. So I'll show you how that's going to work. I got to apologize. I got a little bit ahead here. And uh, I already got this whole subframe off and pulled the uh, air box off. But to get the subframe off, well, first thing you gotta do is take the exhaust pipe off. And let's see, I got it over here. Excuse me. Let me show you how it comes off just in case y'all are watching this and want to know. I'll reinstall it. Okay, so you have a uh, clamp right here. So you have to loosen the clamp. Then there's a mount bolt right here. See, it goes into there. And there's a mount bolt right up there. Exhaust pipe comes off. And then there are two bolts, one here and one on the other side that you take out. And the subframe pivots right here. So the whole thing will lift up like that. And the air box mounts up into here. And there's some obvious mounting points. You have one right here 
and then there's one here. So old air box is out. I transferred a few of the items. This is the uh, new used one. It's a little bit ugly, but that's okay. It's all here. It's solid. So that's the, the important part. So I need to remount this on here and drop this back down and install the exhaust pipe. I also, while I had this up, installed the carburetor. So the carburetor is installed. Everything is working as it should. So I'll get this on, drop it down, install the muffler, and that part will be done. And then uh, we can hook up the gas tank and hopefully she'll fire up. I want to change the spark plug, but I do not have the correct size spark plug wrench. So I'm going to look around. I have some uh, old motorcycle tool kits which are kind of pieces of crap, but they usually have a thinner spark plug socket. So if I have one of them, it might fit. My sockets that I have are too thick. So I'll dig around a little bit and see what I can find. But uh, when, you, when we come back, this tail section should be back down where it belongs. Well, it took some effort, but I got this spark plug out and I am glad I did. It's pretty dirty, pretty bad shape. No. That's the old one, obviously. And that's what your uh, new one looks like. So I uh, dug around in all my motorcycle uh, tool kits. I had like three or four of them that I found. None of them had the right size um, spark plug socket. One of them actually did, but it was too long. It wouldn't fit in there. So I had to come up with a creative solution. So I will show you what I did to get my socket in there. Like I said, the socket was too thick. The outside diameter was too thick to fit in. I'll show you. Okay, let's see if we can get even in there. Let's see, I'll go on this side, it might be better. There you go, it has to get into there. So since the outside diameter of the, the socket is too thick, it wouldn't go in there. So I used a technique that I will call, right now we're gonna call it, Tom's Global Domination Headquarters Homemade Metal Lathe. Here, I'll show you what I did. Here's my grinder. And here's the socket. Turn the grinder on. Mind the noise, mind the sparks. It's not a motorcycle garage uh, video unless you got sparks. And in that fashion, I was able to grind down the tip of this enough where it increased the diameter on the outside. Of course, now it's going to be a little bit weaker, but I have three or four of these. And this one I'm just going to use for spark plug sockets. So there you go. Sometimes when you don't have the correct tool in your shop, you have to get creative. And that's one of the many ways you can get creative. Um, right now I am waiting on a tool for that Yamaha Rhino out there, torque adapter. And if I don't find one pretty soon, I don't want to buy the whole set because it's like $150 and I don't hardly ever use them. I'm just going to make something to use for that if I don't get one here in the next couple days because I'm getting a little impatient and I want to wrap that up. So I'm going to switch out this and we'll get the tank installed and we'll throw the seat on and we're going to kickstart this thing a couple times to see how it runs. And I'll use my new socket to install this.
Well, it's still not perfect, uh, but it does seem to be starting okay. Um, I've, uh, that wasn't the first time I started it, so, you know, the magic of video editing. Um, one of the things that I had to do to get this thing to run better was block off part of this opening here into the air box. So what we're probably going to have to do is we're going to have to find the original baffle that fits here because this thing is just going to be running too lean otherwise. So uh, with that tape over that hole, it runs better, but it's still not quite right. So I have to do a little bit of tinkering, but uh, I've been running it a little bit already. And um, I'm going to get busy changing the oil and then we're going to figure out this wiring. I've already figured out the wiring up in the front here. I can get the headlight to work. It's just going to take a little bit of finagling and then I'll get the tail light and the brake light to work. Get the oil changed and then the last thing I have to do on this bike, besides getting it uh, tuned a little bit better, is to change out these fork boots. So I don't have those yet. Maybe they come in the mail today. We'll have to see. So I'm gonna get busy on the oil change. The new fork um, seal savers came in. So I installed those. That looks pretty nice, the front end now. Um, let's see what else. So there was a broken off bolt here. So I drilled that out, got it out, and I ran a tap through there to clean the uh, threads. Installed a new bolt. Hmm, excuse me. Lunch is, uh, lunch is coming back on me. <clears throat> Gross. But, uh, oh yeah, I got the oil changed. Lubed up the chain. But I'm really not, uh, really not satisfied with the way this thing is running. Um, it seems to be running lean still. And it definitely is feeling hot. Um, so I don't know what's going on exactly with it. Uh, my first thoughts would be uh, I need to get some new uh, jets for the carburetor. Bigger uh, pilot jet and maybe shim up the needle a little bit. Because it's definitely operating like it's lean. The way it's running too hot. But I'm going to contact the uh, gentleman who owns it and see what he wants to do with it. Um, and I'm pretty tired, pretty hot from working on this thing, so I think I'm gonna call it a day and uh, see what he wants to do. It's, it's running better than it was. It's still not uh, as good as I would like it, so I guess we'll see what we do with it. But I'm wrapping it up for the day out here. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.